How can you implement soft deletes with EF Core? I'm going to show you a few different implementations that you can apply to your project, but we're also going to discuss why you might not want to use soft deletes to begin with. Let's start by quickly explaining how soft deletes work with EF Core. And to understand how a soft delete is different from an actual delete, let's take a look at how we delete data with EF Core. You can access your database context and call the remove method on a respective database set. And after you call save changes, this is going to issue a delete statement with your database. In the case of the products table, this would be the SQL statement generated by EF Core. It's going to delete one record with the respective identifier from the database. And once this statement is executed, that record is gone from the database. A soft delete tries to avoid deleting data from the database by marking a respective record as deleted. In the case of a product, so you would update the remove method on your repository to update a product instead, and it's going to set an is deleted flag to true instead of deleting this from the database. This is going to produce a slightly different SQL statement. So instead of a delete statement, we will have an update statement setting the is deleted flag or column to true or one in the case of a SQL database and is going to update just that one record in the database. So our record isn't really deleted, it's just marked as deleted. And when we are querying the database, we have to take care of excluding the soft deleted records. Here's the use case in my eShop application handling the delete product command. It's going to use the repository, which is just EF core behind the scenes to get the record from the database call the remove method on the repository and then persist the changes in the database. And because the remove method is calling the respective remove method with EF core, this is going to issue a delete statement. Let's take a look at an example of this. I'm going to send a request to fetch a list of products from my API. So let's, for example, take the identifier for this product and I'm going to send another get request to get the details just for this product. And because I'm using H2S with this API implementation, it's going to generate me some links. And one of these is going to be a link to delete a product. So this would be the API request I need to send to delete this particular product. So if I go and send this request, it's going to complete. And now if I try to fetch this product, you will see that it's not found because it was deleted from the database. So let's see how we can update our application to support soft deletes instead of completely deleting data from the database. We have to start by introducing an is deleted flag. So I'll head over to the product entity and I'm just going to expose another property. It's going to be a Boolean property. I will call it is deleted and let's give it a getter and a private setter. Then if I head over to my use case, I don't really want to change anything externally with how my repository is used. So I still want my application to rely on the remove method to delete the product, even though we're going to be soft deleting it now, that should be irrelevant and it should be an implementation detail. So if I head over to the product repository, let's see what I need to change here to implement soft deletes. So if you recall from our code snippet earlier, I'm going to call the update method and this is actually going to return an entity entry. This is an EF core concept and you can use the entity entry to access your entity value, which is the product instance. However, I can also access a respective property on my entity entry. So I'm going to access the is deleted property by using the name of operator to specify the property name, and I can set the current value of this property to true. Now, there are a few things going on behind the scenes. When you call the remove method with EF core, it's going to update the entity state on your entity entry to delete it. But if I call the update method, it's going to be changed to modified. When the entity state is deleted, that's going to issue a delete statement when you call save changes. But in this case, we will get an update statement. And because I'm changing the is deleted value, then this is going to be set in the database. I will also need to create a respective database migration. So I'm going to add a new migration by saying add migration. And let's call this products add is deleted. This is going to give me my database migration that I will apply when the application starts and it's just going to add the is deleted column to the products table. Let's go ahead and start our application and see how the delete use case is behaving now. I'm going to fetch a different product from the database and you can see that this product exists and now I will try to delete it except we are going to issue a soft delete. 
so you can see that this request completes, but if I try to get the product from the database, you can see that it's still there. This is because we aren't filtering out soft deleted records in our queries. If I go over to the get product query handler, I can add another where statement, and I'm going to say that you can only return products where is deleted is not true. If I start the application again and I send the same request from Postman, you will see that this time we are getting a 404 not found response, even though the record is still present in the database. This also gives me the ability to undo the delete operation so I can go into the database, mark the product as not deleted, and when I send this query, we're going to get back the product response. Soft deletes are useful when you want to maintain referential integrity, for example, even in face of deleting data, by implementing a soft delete so that the records that are referencing the foreign key pointing to the product table can still use that foreign key because the respective row will be soft deleted and we can still reference the primary key. However, having to add an is deleted filter in all of our queries in the system is a bit cumbersome and also having to implement soft deletes in all of our repositories. So is there an alternative to implement this in a more generic way? Let's go ahead and revert the repository implementation back to the remove method. And I'm also going to update my query to get rid of this filter because I'm going to apply it in a different way. I will head over to my domain project and in the primitives folder, I'm going to add a new interface. Let's call this iSoft Deletable. And this interface is going to have just one property called as deleted. I'm going to make the product entity implement this interface. And you will see that we don't need to make any additional changes because I'm already implementing the one property defined on this interface. However, this is going to allow me to do something interesting. If I head over to my EF core database context, I can override the save changes method to implement soft deletes. Let's go ahead and move the domain event publishing logic into a separate method, which I will call publish domain events. And inside of the save changes method, I'm going to access the change tracker. Then I'm going to say entries, and I will look for entities implementing the iSoft deletable interface. I'm also going to add a filter that the entity state needs to be deleted. These are the entries that I need to soft delete. So let's call this the soft delete entries. Now I'm going to iterate through this collection. So I will say for each soft delete entries, and this is my entity entry. And then I can say entity entry property, and I will access the is deleted property by saying name of I soft deletable is deleted and set the current value to true. I also need to update the entity state to be modified instead of deleted to issue an update statement and properly execute a soft delete. Now, if you also want to track when an entity will soft deleted, you can add another property on the iSoft deletable interface. This would be a daytime property that you could call deleted on UTC. Now, the second part of this implementation is going to be automatically filtering out soft deleted record. And you can do this with the F core query filters. So if I go to the entity configuration for the product entity, I can go ahead and define a query filter. I will say builder has query filter, and this allows me to configure an expression that should be applied whenever we generate a query for this entity. So I can say filter out any products where the is deleted flag is not true. And this was the same filter that we were applying in the get product query handler. Let's go ahead and start the application again and take a look at this new implementation in action. If I find another product that wasn't deleted yet and we send a soft delete request for this product, we're going to land in the breakpoint that I introduced in my application database context. And I will hit continue and you will see that we have one entity entry which was supposed to be deleted. We're going to set the is deleted property to true and update the entity state to modified, and I'm going to complete this transaction and persist the changes in the database. If I try to send the same delete request again, we're going to get back a 404 not found response, and if I try to query for this product, you will see that it's not found because it was soft deleted. One issue with soft deletes is that you will end up with many records inside of the table that could be marked as deleted. And these records aren't important for the normal execution of your application. So what you could do is instead of using soft deletes, you could have a separate archive table where you would just move the deleted records. 
Of course, this would require some juggling of foreign keys to make everything work as expected, but your original table, let's say the products in this example, is only going to contain the valid records that aren't deleted. When it comes to performance, because we are using a query filter to filter out all of the records that are deleted, we could consider creating a filtered index that matches this query and potentially it can be used to improve performance. So what you can do is say has index and specify that you want to have an index on the is deleted column, but you also want to define a filter that you only want to index records where is deleted is equal to zero. You will have to write valid SQL and this is going to create a filtered index. A filtered index is practical when you only want to index part of your table. In this case, we're only indexing the records that are not marked as deleted. And this type of index is going to match the query that's marked with the query filter where we are filtering out undeleted records. So potentially you could see improved performance when using this end. Of course, you will have to measure this and see if it makes sense for your application. I also wanted to mention EF core interceptors as an alternative to updating the database context to implement soft deletes. This is what an interceptor could look like. You would implement the save changes interceptor class and then you can override the respective save changes method. I'm going to override the async version and inside we're going to do basically the same thing. We will use the change tracker to find soft deletable entries where the entity state is deleted and then loop through these entries and update the state to modified, the is deleted column to true and the deleted on property to the current UTC time. Then you just need to register this interceptor with your EF core context and everything will work just the same. I also want to leave you with a remark if you really want to be using soft deletes to begin with. Soft deletes are useful when there is a risk of accidentally deleting data and you want to mark them as soft deleted so that you can restore potentially unwanted deletes. Soft deletes are also useful for archiving unused data, although you can just create a dedicated archive table and store the soft deleted or deleted records into the archive table. But what I want you to consider if what you are trying to achieve with a soft delete is actually a hidden business operation. For example, let's say you are canceling an order. Do you really want to delete an order? Or is this a dedicated operation in the business that you should be implementing in your code? Most of the time, when we are trying to use a soft delete, we could end up hiding an important business concept. I already mentioned canceling an order. Archiving a product could be another business concept. Voiding an invoice could be another business concept. So this is the direction that I want you to be thinking in when you're considering if you want to use soft deletes or not. If you enjoyed this video, then you should watch this video next. Check out my software architecture courses on my website, subscribe to my Patreon to access the source code for this video, and until next time, stay awesome.